Hello and welcome to the IndieMind video review of Kingdom's Fall from Development Studio Last Life Games. Kingdom's Fall is an isometric iOS adventure game created in the image of the classic Legend of Zelda games, and throughout this review you'll find that I'll be making numerous comparisons to those titles. In Kingdom's Fall, players take on the role of a young hero who sets out to save the world from an advancing evil. The journey will take players through a variety of areas of the world with some typical adventure game themes like forests, snowy winterlands, deserts, and so on. Most of these lands have been taken over by generals of an evil necromancer, but before you can challenge him, you'll first need to take out those generals. Much like Zelda, these bosses are hiding out in dungeons filled with monsters, traps, and puzzles to solve. Early on, players will have a sword and shield in their arsenal accessed by tapping buttons on the right hand side of the screen. These actions have a refresh timer before they can be used again. As with Zelda, each dungeon holds a special item that can aid the hero in fighting, traveling, and solving puzzles. While I wasn't terribly impressed with some of the earlier puzzles, which mainly involved stepping on pressure plates or flipping switches, some of the latter dungeons will often require you to use a number of those acquired abilities in order to progress. I think one of the highlights of Kingdom's Fall is that those abilities aren't just needed in that current dungeon, but continue to be used well throughout the rest of the game. While the boss arenas aren't terribly impressive, the boss fights themselves are pretty challenging and varied. In some cases players will have to dodge projectile attacks like in a shoot 'em up In other fights the boss spawns or uses pets to distract the player from taking out the main objective. It would have been nice to have some personality or characterization in the bosses themselves. In the overworld, the NPC dialogue with different people you encounter will reveal the woes and plights of those citizens. And even though their stories are brief, some of them are actually quite touching or interesting. Actually seeing some of that evil in action, or having the boss do anything really other than attacking you in its lair, I think would have really helped flesh out the story. So up to now the game sounds pretty good, but there's one major problem with it and that's the control system. While the Zelda series has often revolutionized or standardized controls in adventure games, Kingdom's Fall suffers because of the way it plays. Player movement is achieved by dragging a finger in the desired direction. The same action is also performed for changing the player's orientation. With touchscreen controls this is much more difficult than it sounds. When the player is facing diagonally, it's not readily apparent which direction they're facing, and this can be a problem when attacking or using a shield or even moving, because your character has to be in alignment with the enemy. And because of the sensitivity of the controls, navigating narrow walkways over bottomless pits and other hazards becomes much harder than it needs to be. Unlike with an analog joystick or a digital directional pad, the touchscreen controls here are not built for a game that often requires minute adjustments and some frenetic changes, particularly when in battle. I also found myself missing the action buttons on the side of the screen at critical times because I, like many players, don't leave my hands on the screen and there's no tactile response to tell you when you are or are not pressing a button. On multiple occasions, I was forced to put the game down and walk away in frustration because I known that whatever mistake I had made wasn't really my fault, it was more of a fault of the control system. I do think it's important to point out that the control issues are something that the developers know are a problem. Multiple updates to the game were actually released while I was reviewing the game and each update came with fixes and tweaks to the controls. Now it's still a problem but it's nice to know that the developers are trying to do something about it. It's a lot to expect for an iOS indie game to try to stack up against lauded classics like the games in the Zelda series. After playing through this game I asked myself, does Kingdom's Fall match up well? The answer is not really. The presentation, and in particular the soundtrack, are pretty good. And as I mentioned, I did enjoy a lot of the NPC dialogue, though I wish there had been more of it. And some of the items were actually pretty fun to use, even if a few of them are rehashes from other games. But it's really the controls that do the most harm to the game. 
it's definitely not unplayable, and with some patience, I think that players can adjust and actually get pretty good with the mechanics, but it does really detract from the experience. What this all adds up to is a game that's just the side of recommendable, netting a score of 3 out of a possible 5 points. Keep in mind, though, that the developers continue to add improvements, so the experience will likely get better over time. Thank you for watching our video review of Kingdom's Fall from development studio Last Life Games. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see all of our other videos. For more indie gaming coverage, be sure to check out TheIndieMind.com.